I'm Steve. Um, I've grown up a Christian. Uh, I can't say that I really understood what it was. Being, you know, born into it, you don't really have that choice per se. It's kind of like you went to church, or my parents took me to church, and I just more or less associated myself as a Christian because I'd go to church every Sunday. I don't know if that's really true. I still struggle a lot with whether or not I love or am even capable of love. Um, I will say that I had like a hard time fitting in with people. I've always kind of preferred being alone and I think it mostly stems from when I was about seven we moved from one elementary school to another and I just kind of decided, you know, and I, I think this is more of an internal decision, like a subconscious decision, but I just didn't really care to get to know anybody because I wasn't going to, you know, see them for a very long time. So it's just kind of like, eh, I'll just, you know, keep to myself. So I always kept to myself. Um, you know, growing up, still never really had a close group of friends. Maybe, um, you know, I, I mostly hung out with, you know, people... Probably not the best, you know, people, like, yeah, that's not very fair, though. I mean, the stoners, the atheists, the, uh, you know. And I never really talked about being Christian much, because <sighs> growing up with it, it was kind of like I took it for granted. I didn't really understand it, and to be honest, I still don't quite understand it, though it's, <sighs> it's on my heart a lot. I've met God several times, um, so I know he's real. I mean, I can't convince you otherwise. It's something that you have to experience. I remember growing up, though, in, like, church, and always, that's always the big pressure is, how many people are you going to take to heaven with you? It's always the big freaking question. And I remember, like, being in youth group, and a lot of my friends, as I said, were, you know, either atheists, stoners, and, you know, whether or not, maybe agnostics. I mean, I'm not even sure, but, you know, I remember one time, like, or rather after a couple of weeks, one of trying to express God to my friend, who, to be honest, I mean, I grew up in a faith where it was more or less based on fear and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. It's something I'm really trying to change because it's not true faith at all. Um, but, like, you know, I don't want to go to hell. It's the scariest thing in the world. You go into this deep, horrible place. Whether it's fire or not, who knows. But, um, I'll say this. Um, the best description that I've ever had. Now, I've done, I've done my share of drugs, and ecstasy is the best description I can give you of heaven and hell. When you're on the high of ecstasy, you like. It is amazing. It is heaven. Is what it is, because everybody loves each other. Whether that's real love or not, it's just. It's definitely a feeling though, like everybody is caring, everybody is warm, everybody is happy. Just, it's amazing. Um, however, the real reason you should never do ecstasy, <laughs> mind you, is that once you get off the high, it is horrible. Everything, the warmth, all of it is gone, and all you're left with is just this horrible feeling of everything is on your shoulders and it just you feel empty and lonely and just cursed so I would have to say <laughs> never take ecstasy one <laughs> but two it's heaven and hell are real and it's really more or less a psychological you know place I'd say or it's not so much a physical fire as it is a draining of all love and happiness and replacing with, with loneliness and despair. Um, but 
you know, I'm just, I'm kind of a struggling Christian. It's probably the best definition for myself. And I'm really just trying to get back to a good place.